Hi there, my name's Vince from My Mate Vince, and in this video today is going to be a nice tea break repair, so hopefully a relatively short video. We're going to be trying to fix up this 1977 games console. It's going to be very Pong based, you know, where you're going to have player one on one side, player two on the other side, just lines moving up and down with a ball going in between. It's nice that it came in its box and everything like that, and it also has the light gun. Obviously, light gun's not going to work on a modern TV because the technology's changed, but it's strange. This is really bringing back memories for me. And I don't remember having this particular one, but I'm wondering whether the light gun was from a different company and it was bought in because these little lines here, I just remember scratching like a file, my nails and stuff and that when I was, uh, when I was a kid. And also I remember having to put the, uh, the barrel of the gun in there. So that's brought back some memories from a long, long, long time ago. TV's just turned itself off. Uh, I tried tuning it in. It was sold as not working. And when I tried tuning it in, it didn't pick up any channels whatsoever. And I did it on the analog one there. You can see we got the power button here. It takes six C-cell batteries or a power adapter. It doesn't come with the power adapter, but uh, yeah, the, the battery sh it should work with the batteries. The compartment's nice and clean. So let's bring it over to the blue mat and see if we can find out what's going on with it. Not only is there's no power, but also this thing here doesn't grip in whatsoever. This one feels okay, this side. The rest of it looks to be in very, very good condition. I don't think this would have had much use whatsoever. Let's see if we can fix it. Right, so what could be wrong with it? I mean, it could be continuity through the lead. That's not working. Maybe there's no power going from the batteries into it. There's no indication on here. There's no little lights to let you know whether it's on or off. But look, look at the uh, battery compartment here. It says made in Hong Kong. Ah, there must be a speaker. Which case then you think maybe when you turn it on, it would have some uh, little beep. But look at those batteries terminals there absolutely perfect the whole thing looks immaculate considering it is from 1977 right let's undo the two screws this port here is for the light gun and that is the external power adapter port oh two screws here as well there is a speaker Oh, I've got that lovely electronic smell. A little bit of plastic here. Lovely smell. Okay, so now, how are we gonna get this little board out? We've got a screw here, let's undo that, and a screw here as well. Is that gonna lift off? Yes, it is, excellent, right. Now, if we undo that one there, we should be able to get rid of this front plate. We're free. We are free. Whoops. Oh, little buttons here. Okay. You can see where it's been burnt in again. Have a look here, here and here. And that's from wrapping the cable. Well, not even wrapping, that's just from the cable resting against here. It has some kind of reaction with it and eats into it. Now, oh, look at the way they've done their little button presses down here with these things. That's kind of nice, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so it's just a loop of wire underneath that, and then when you press it down, it hits against the wire. See there, so that's all already in contact with that one. Then when it does that, it touches that wire there. I wonder, was it called the 3600 to try to mimic the 2600, the Atari? Right, so we've got a problem with one of these things. So this one is okay. This one's not, that's all loose. So, I don't know, we'll have to look into that later. Now, does it all look okay? Well, there's lots of kind of leakage all over the board, but I think that's probably some sort of conformal coating rather than the capacitors having leaked. 
I suppose first of all, let's just check for continuity on the lead between here and here, then we know that the lead itself is okay. Right, so let's get into the shield there. Let's go into the inner one. Yeah, let's get into there. The problem with these is they, it sounds like they're shorting anyway, but we have got continuity. It could be a short in there, I wouldn't know about it, but there is definitely continuity there. Right, I don't think it's anything to do with the lead. So now, batteries. So from here, it goes, ah, do you know what it could be? It could be a fault in the switch here, which is not allowing the voltage through. So let's uh, see if we've got continuity between here. So from here, we've got to go into here, but then it should continue on, I presume, to here, which it is. So we should have continuity between here and here, which we do. Have we got continuity between here and here? We do. So it's not that because sometimes with the, when you plug when you plug it in, you see it will break the uh, the one from the, the the battery here, and it will just travel straight down the white one. So sometimes these can fail. So we should have voltage going into the board. I'm just going to double check that. And this one is on, so it should be on now. Yeah, we've got nine volts. So from there it travels up to here. Then where does it go to here? Yes, what is that component? Oh, the on and off switch, sorry. On and off switch. Then the on and off switch travels down this way. Ah, oh, look at that, I've just noticed. Ah, do you remember I said there was a bit of plastic? Remember I said there was a bit of plastic, yeah? Well, I thought it was from the casing. It's not, it's from this little thing here. I wonder if it's a voltage regulator, look. Ready? Ta-da! You see here the bit of plastic should go on top of here like that. So I presume that's our problem. Something must have uh, got extremely hot in here to blow the top off that. So I don't think drop damage would cause that. Now, is that voltage regulator? What are you? So it's a 9013 transistor. It's just a normal NPN transistor. Interestingly, the rest of them on the board are all 9018, but they all look to be fine anyway. So what I'm going to do is see what the equivalent ones are and see if I either have a 9013 or equivalent in the little transistor kit that I bought ages ago. It does say here that the equivalent ones are and we have a list of them, and one's a BC337. And I do have these, BC337, general purpose NPN. So let's find that one in here, and then uh, let's unsolder this. And I'll tell you what, when it's out, let's measure it, just in case we know it's blown, but just in case it's not faulty, let's measure it in the component tester and see what it compares to, to a new one. Actually, I just wanna make sure the B yeah, the C is there, so the, uh, yeah, I've got to be careful now because it's, it's uh, labelled up the wrong way. So let's just double check which side the pins are. I can see that the collector is that side there. So we've got uh, the base in the middle and the emitter over this side. And on this one we have uh, collector, base, emitter, so they're just all swapped. So I have to put it in back to front basically, which is fine, and then the collector will be on that side. As you can see the flat side of this the collectors on that side while the flat side of this the collectors on that side it's swapped over now well, that came out nice and easy let's see what it reads in here
fantastic. It reads nothing. Brilliant. Okay. Well, that's our problem. And there we go, MPN. Right, let's pop this one in. And then uh, we also have to worry about why that little uh, jack thing's not working. Right, let's just double check which one is the collector. So the collector is on the left hand side here. So we have to put it in this way round. Like so. And let's solder that in. Oh, do you know what? I've just realized that they've made the board so that the triangle is the flat side. So if you have a look, the triangle, the flat side is on the flat side here. The triangle, the flat side is on the flat side here. So obviously now in the future, if somebody looks at this, you can see that it's been swapped. Yeah, because it's no longer on the flat side. <laughs> Did you hear that? I must have shorted across them. I've still got the batteries in, haven't I? I shouldn't have done that. Oh, look, this has come off from somewhere. I've got to solder that back on. Right, let's uh, pop the batteries out. I heard the speaker uh, come to life. Now, I didn't take any note of where the black wire goes, but there is an empty prong up here, so I presume it's going to go on the top here. Let's chop down the legs. And trim back a bit of this cable. It's also clean in here. So it looks like the transistor just failed because it doesn't look like anything's really caused it. Everything looks lovely. Okay, so hopefully that's fixed it, but we won't know yet until we tune it into the telly. Now, what's happening with player two? So player one's nice and tight. This one's all loose. Why? Is it going to actually affect anything? Yeah, it doesn't feel right. It just pops straight out. Right, let's unsolder this and see if we can work out what's happening. So I just unsolder the 41 to begin with and it confuses me because there's three contacts on it yet it's just a mono jack so the mono jack's only going to have two contacts the tip and the sleeve so uh, I need to unsolder the good one as well to then try to work out the difference between them so let's pick up the video when I've just unsoldered the good one No I still can't work it out Just going to get my meter on continuity Right, so on the working one, is this in contact with here? No, is this in contact with here? No. Right, now when we plug it in, is it in contact? No. So what's the purpose of that? So is this just a, this is just, a, just an anchor point here? That needs to be in contact with that. If we plug this in here, is this in contact with here? Mm, yes and no, depending on where uh, where it is. Right, okay. Right, the thing that's confusing me is, look, right, when that's pushed up there, you can see that you can't see any of that collar here, yeah? When I push it down, look how low it goes compared to that one. Have they used a slightly different part? How can we have so much height in this one? They're not the same, are they? No, because that needs to be up here. So is it just a bit of a design fault? 
Really, we need a little collar in here is what we need. We need a bit of wire wrapped around there and that will solve the problem. How much is this just going to be showing through here? Nothing. So I can wrap a wire around there and then uh, try to solder it into place, even melt it into the plastic, it doesn't matter. Really what I need is a little circlip to go around there, but I'm not going to have one of them. I think that's just been unfortunately designed to fail unintentionally because the force of pushing it in and out is going to, if there's, if there's like an empty bit there, eventually it's going to push down, isn't it? There we go, look at that, that's going to fit in there nice. So let's uh, put a bit more on there. And let's twist it. Really, I could have done with a slightly bigger wire. I think it will probably do, especially when it's soldered into place. Let's see. Yeah, it's going all the time now. I think that will be all right, but I'm gonna add solder all around it to try to fill it up a bit. Yeah, it's filling in there nicely now. Right, I'm not going to do any more than that because I'll end up melting all the plastic. Right, I think that's going to have done because you can now see that that's not loose whatsoever. The wire's filled up the hole, the solder's filled up the hole, and now when I push this into here, it still clips onto this side here, but it's not shorting with anything else. And when we go between here and here, you can hear whether we go up or down on this, it works. Let's get it soldered back in. And while I'm here, I'm just gonna put a dribble of deoxy in each of the switches. Be better if I had the aerosol, but I've left that in the car. The rolls, so I can't, uh, I can't get to it. I don't know if any of this is actually going to work its way in. Okay, well what I'll do is I'll put a little bit in each. And keep working them back and forth. Hopefully some will make its way into the actual switch. Right, I'm just going to use the data vac with the bigger nozzle, because apparently it's supposed to work better right on these switches. Hopefully then that will turn the deoxid into like an aerosol and get that worked right the way in. Okay, I can confirm it's much more powerful with the bigger nozzle. I thought with the smaller one it would con concentrate the jet much more. That is seriously powerful now. Wow. Okay. Right, let's get it back together and test it to see if it's going to work. I heard something. Oh, listen to that. Oh, wow. Oh God, that brings back such memories. I didn't have this one, but I had a Benetone version. I reckon the insides are the same because these symbols here look the same. I reckon they came out, it came out of the same factory. 
Uh, oh, those sounds there, that can't be just memories to me. That must bring back so many memories to a lot of my viewers as well of the same age. Listen. That's the, ball, that's the ball going across the screen right now. Ball speed. Player size will make you bigger or smaller. Ball angle must be more extreme. What I don't understand is I get this. Tennis AB, that will be there. Uh, BC would be, uh, for example, squash. But what would target 1B, target 2D mean? And that's when you plug in this here, it automatically brings something up on screen and you just have to change it between that and that. Oh, wow. Okay, well, it looks, sounds like we fixed it. Let's get it tuned into the telly and then uh, end on a bit of uh, gameplay. Okay, let's turn it on. And let's tune this in. Oh, here we go. I was about to say it's not finding anything. Uh, oh, did you see that? Oh, yes. There it is. Okay, I'll let it go through the rest of its thing. And then, uh, yeah, you can see their TV one channel found. Right, let me get my tripod out and we can do a little bit of gameplay. Right, check this out. You have to put it on mute because uh, there's so much noise on it because the speakers come through here anyway, don't they? Look, that arrives. Now watch this. That arrives. Yes. And then you, and you can see they're going up and down. Now, I don't remember them being that jittery before, but memory can be a weird thing. And also I'm not on a CRT, am I? And you can do manual serve as well as automatic. And now watch. So now it has to be, hold on. Right, I have to interrupt there and remind myself that this is a tea break repair, not a trying to fix video, so I have to keep it shorter. Now, it's not normal. It looks good and stuff, but the controllers are too jerky when they're moving up and down. These games should be super smooth. This is all about time in these games, and uh, even on a TV like this, you're not going to get the full experience. It needs to be a CRT TV because you need instant response time. Now, I know I hate... No, I don't hate, but it is annoying when people just moan about the response times as if kind of it's going to make that, that, that much difference on some games that people play. But when it comes to these old games, it really is important. And if you've got a delay, you can feel it. It's, it is the difference between winning and losing. Not that it's going to be highly competitive, but still, if you're playing to win, you're playing to win. So... Uh, the controller should be smooth on the way up and on the way down. Both of these ones are jumping all over the place. As well as that, the light gun's not working. Now, of course, the light gun's not going to work on a modern TV like this, but I connected up to a very small CRT that I've got, a little four-inch thing that I've got. I know that's very small, but it should still work, and uh, it's not working. So we need to go back over to the blue mat. We need to clean up both of the potentiometers or the variable resistors in the controller, and we also need to have a look at the light gun to see why that's not working. So apologies for the length of it, but again, it's, there's quite a few faults on this thing. So uh, you can't expect it to be done in a 10 minute video when you're talking about now we've already done the transistor, we've already done the 3.5 millimeter mono jack, and now we've still got two more fault, well, three more faults to get to, two more controllers, which are janky up and down, and a light gun that's not working. So uh, yeah, that's why sometimes these tea breaks drag on a bit. Right, so these come off really easy. There's just one little screw here, and then they uh, come straight off. And I can see a nice 500K variable resistor in here. So let's put some deoxit in here, and then use this again.
well hopefully after a bit of use it will work its way in there and start cleaning it let's do the same on the other one Strange, I've even got memories of taking this thing apart. But not vivid, it just feels like I've taken it apart, you know? Yeah, this is all bringing back memories, that there. I've had this apart before, but yet I didn't own that console. For sure I didn't. Right, okay, let's see now if we can work out what's going on. So when you do this here, that's just to give it a nice click, that's not doing anything. That hits against here. So the yellow wire hits against, I'm not sure, one of the other wires. Now, let's check the continuity. So, is this in contact with here? No. So where is that in contact with? How many wires have we got? We got a red, a black, a white, and a ground. So now, let's start with the grounds. Nothing coming up there. What about this one. Okay, so we've got ground there right now. Where's this one coming up? White, red, black. No, so there's nothing there. Now let's go on to the tip here. White, black, red, no. And let's go on to the tip here. Red, okay. So we've got some, but we haven't got them all. Let's strip the wire back here, because we've got loads of length on the wire. I presume this is where it's gone. Hmm. Well, the wires to me look to be intact unless they've gone in the length here. Let's have a look. Yeah, they've gone here. Look, can you see there? So yeah, just where it's flexing. So this must have had a bit of use then, at least on this game. Can you see there it's gone here? Let's see if the black one's gone. Yeah, I think it's gone. You can tell it's gone there, look. Ready? Go to strip it back here and it's gone here. I presume the white one's all right. Okay, let's uh, just chop here and then make nice new wires from here and solder them on to this top board here. Right, so that was nice and easy to fault find purely because I could see stripped wire where it went into the gun. They always go there, don't they? They always go where you have a heavy piece against a light wire, whether it's headphones, gun, controller, they always seem to go there. So uh, yeah, nice and easy to fix. So we've got plenty of spare wire on this. So all I'm doing is chopping out the, the four inches or whatever it is off the bad wire. And then we just need to solder up some new wire, make sure we wrap it around the cable tie part to give it a little bit of strength so it can't pull straight out of the gun. And that is it. I do hold it up to the camera because I'm thinking if it was like the tin can alley, then you should be able to physically see a light. But then I thought it might have been like a infrared light, like a remote control. And I was hoping if you held it up to a camera that we might not see it with our eyes, but through the lens of the camera, you might see it. But I couldn't see it on anything. So at this moment in time, I wasn't sure whether or not this gun was actually working because it wasn't giving me any indication of lighting up, but we did find the fault. So now let's finish up the video where we're back over onto the world's smallest 
see it, one of the world's smallest. I do probably own the world's smallest CRT in one of those Sony Watchmans. But uh, yeah, in one of the world's smallest CRT TVs in a little boombox radio. And uh, let's finish up with a little bit of gameplay, show you the light gun working. And also the controller's now working super Super smooth. That deoxit is miracle stuff. Why do they not sponsor me? I sing their praises in every other video. Maybe it's because I don't reach out to people. Maybe I need to start doing that. Uh, if you work for deoxit, contact me. I will now show you it all working and also I think I'm going to finish challenging my son to a game of squash. Okay, let's see now what's going to happen. Right. Oh my god, did you see that? It's actually working, oh my god. Watch. Ready? Can you see when I press the button, it disappears? Oh, actually, it only does it when I hit it, so if I miss... Yeah, look, if I miss, it's not doing it, but... I'm actually hitting it. Amazing, it's working. Right, I think I'm gonna finish off the video. Oh, that brings back such memories. Obviously you need a bigger screen though. I think I'm gonna finish off the video with a bit of a game of squash between me and my son. Okay, good news is it's working super smooth now since we put the deoxit in there. So check this out, I'm gonna be the white one. And one second Ben. You see now, look how smooth that is working. And now do your one. You see, there's no jitter there at all. Obviously this is a color console, but this is a black and white CRT, I've got it on. Right, ready now, so uh, let's uh, see who's gonna win. Okay, so that was yours, so it's your go now. All right. So it's 2-0 to me. Three nil. We've got it on the lowest setting as well. You can make it smaller and faster. Should we make it harder? Yeah. Let's do uh, ball speed. Oh my God. Who's it now, me or you? Me. No, that's much harder. Ah, this is where the true professional, you see I've had years of this. Look at this whitewash. Is it you or me? Me. Do you want me to do it slower but with a smaller player? Yeah. Okay. Ball smooth. Uh, there. Now, oh my, look at that. <laughs> I've nearly won. Two more and I've got it. Uh oh, you're making a comeback. The victor, the victor, I show no mercy. It's only been 15 minutes later and now he's beating me 3-8. He's suddenly found his technique. He was saying that, I've made a comeback now. It's whenever you're on camera, you're no good. You've upped the speed as well. Now I know it's from 1977 and obviously there's not a lot to it, but it's fun. There's gameplay, the gameplay's there, do you know what I mean? It's uh. It really is enjoyable. Now, if this was on a normal TV, it wouldn't have the same, it just wouldn't be the same. It needs to be on the CRT because you need it to be instant. But I can honestly say this is working perfectly. Absolutely perfectly. The, uh, by putting the deoxit in there, it's, uh, oh my God, I'm gonna lose, hold on. <laughs> uh, by putting the deoxit in there, it really freed it up. And you can see it's just, uh, it's just, Perfect as far as the control is concerned. Come on. <laughs> oh, here we go. Is, is it going to be a tight? Is it? Oh, my, it's 11 oh, 14 all. Next one wins. Yes. No! <laughs> ah, well, what a way to end the video. Well, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed that tea break fix there. A nice little change of a uh, nice little thing, various little things. So, dodgy transistor, bad wiring on that. 
bad connection on that and these needed cleaning. I think really a perfect little fix because it wasn't just one thing but everything was nice and uh, doable and it's ended up with a perfect little working machine. Really a lot of fun. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and I will see you all very soon. Take care everyone. With my neighbors Could be hard or it could be a cinch Can you fix it, my own mind? At least I'm gonna try Try, 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 try. try.